So many of us worry about developing dementia as we get older, yet at the same time think that it's a matter of destiny, bad genes, bad luck, or just an inevitability of getting old. So today I want to tell you about a study that's just been published that's not only really advanced our understanding of what goes wrong in the aging brain, but shows us about a protective mechanism that's basically been lying dormant and how we can activate it. Now importantly, this is not something that might help us in 20 years in the future when some new drug gets produced. This is something that is freely available to all of us right away. And I know this all sounds too good to be true, but stick with me here. Look, Alzheimer's disease is devastating. Not only do I spend a significant amount of my working life working with patients with dementia, my grandmother had dementia, and over the last few years, I've watched my mother develop dementia. I sure as hell don't want to go down that route, and I suspect you don't either. So this new study is called um, Beta-Hydroxybutyrate is a Metabolic Regulator of Proteostasis in the Aged and Alzheimer's Disease Brain. Now, there's a link to the original study in the description below this video for those of you who want to go and geek out on the original literature. For the rest of you, I need to start with a bit of background stuff so that we can properly understand this paper and why this study is so significant. So what is actually going on in our brains as we age? Inside our brain cells, we've got lots of proteins performing various functions, and we need to maintain a balance of those proteins. You see, these proteins are synthesized from the instructions laid out in our DNA. They fold up, they move around, and they break down. And this should be a finely balanced process. You may be familiar with the term homeostasis, the process of maintaining an internal state of balance. Well, what we're dealing with here is called proteostasis, where we're just specifically talking about the balance of proteins. Now, the loss of proteostasis is one of the hallmarks of an aging brain. And it also explains a lot about what is going on in the brain of someone with Alzheimer's disease, where there are a number of different proteins that have effectively gone rogue. For example, there's a protein which, when it gets cut incorrectly, produces something called amyloid beta peptides. Now, these clump together to form plaques which accumulate between the neurons in the brain. These are called amyloid plaques and are one of the hallmark features of Alzheimer's disease. They trigger a cascade of issues within the brain which lead to the death of neurons. But it's not just these amyloid plaques either. There's proteins called tau proteins which put really simply, form like a scaffolding system in the brain. They get abnormally modified and start to form tangles, which again leads to the death of neurons in Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative conditions. In Parkinson's disease, we see a misfolding of a protein called alpha-synuclein. So what I really want you to understand is that the correct maintenance of proteins in the brain is important. It gets disrupted as we age, and it gets disrupted in a range of neurodegenerative diseases. So why does this process go wrong? Doesn't our brain have inbuilt mechanisms to maintain proteostasis? Kind of like a janitorial team for the brain, cleaning up the mess when things go wrong? Well, yes it does. However, it's pretty clear that something is going wrong with that process. Okay, so we've covered most of the title now. We've covered the bit that says proteostasis in the aged and Alzheimer's disease brain. But what about beta-hydroxybutyrate? Well, beta-hydroxybutyrate is what is known as a ketone body. Now, regular viewers of this channel will know all about ketone bodies, but for those of you who don't know, I'll quickly explain. Ketones or ketone bodies are made by our livers from fat when our bodies don't have sufficient glucose to provide us with energy. So that's typically when we are fasting on a very low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet, uh, performing intense exercise, or more commonly for people in the modern world, it's when we're unwell, which is usually the only time that people don't eat long enough to enter the state of ketosis. So yeah, think of ketones as a backup fuel source that steps in when glucose is scarce. Now, scientists have long been fascinated by ketones. A ketogenic diet has been shown to extend lifespan in mouse studies. It's been shown to increase healthy lifespan, including memory in mouse studies. Don't ask me how you test a mouse's memory. Also, ketogenic diets have been shown to improve cognitive and motor behavior in mouse models of Alzheimer's disease. And we've known that fasting, which is a ketogenic state, induces a state of intracellular cleanup called autophagy. The thing is, we haven't really known the details of why ketones are so important in that process. And until now, we've really only thought of these ketones as an alternative energy source. But now, thanks to this study, we know they're doing something much more interesting. 
This study identified that the beta-hydroxybutyrate is like a molecular janitor in our brains. It helps identify and deal with misfolded proteins like the ones that cause issues in conditions like Alzheimer's disease. And they also showed that beta-hydroxybutyrate seems to be selective. It's not just grabbing any proteins at random, it's specifically targeting the troublemakers. And the study basically looked at this in a number of different scenarios. They did the studies in test tubes and in living organisms worms and mice to be specific, basically the results seem to be reproducible across these different scenarios. And they also gave mice a ketone supplement. It helped clear out those problematic proteins from their brains. And this really all makes sense. See, over millions of years, evolutionary pressures have shaped our biology to maximize survival during times of scarcity. And one of the ways we do that is by activating a powerful internal cleanup system when glucose levels drop and ketosis kicks in. Yet today, in a world of abundance, we never really tap into this ancient protective mechanism. But the good news is, it is there. We've got the evidence for it. Even better, this isn't just some theoretical discovery that may lead to some drug being produced in the future. Entering the metabolic state of ketosis is something that is freely available to us all, anytime we want it. And yes, this new study clearly has limitations. It's not a randomized control trial or anything. So you've got to decide for yourself the extent to which you want to integrate this new information into your own life. But at the very least, I hope this new study has helped you see that brain aging and dementia isn't necessarily about some predetermined destiny. We probably have far more control over our long-term brain health than you previously might have thought. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.